You're listening to Head Voice, bringing you inside the minds of the best in contemporary acapella. I'm Evan, and holy crap, we're at 30 episodes. May not feel like a lot, but from our end, a lot of hard work went into all these episodes, and it's kind of crazy that we've come this far. I won't make a big to-do about it until we get to episode 50, but from the bottom of me and Kayla's hearts, uh, we really, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Whether you've been listening since the beginning or just started listening a few weeks ago, we really appreciate it. This week, we've got another really good episode for you. We've got VJ Rosales from the Philharmonic. They've been featured on The Sing-Off, Pitch Perfect 2, and Backup James Corden for his riff-off segments. We have all their social medias linked in the show notes for you to check them out further. BJ is a truly radiant and amazing human being. We talked to him about his journey to being a musician in the first place, his work with the Philharmonic, and at Acapella Academy. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy episode 30 of Head Voice. So thank you, VJ, for joining us. We've wanted to you on Head Voice for a while now, so we're really happy to have you on. Thanks. Yeah, I'm so, so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yay! Yay. Of course. (laughs) Um, So first question, um, would you mind just kind of giving us a little introduction to where you're from and how you sort of got into music during your younger years? For sure, yeah. Well, my name is VJ Rosales, and you may know me from the Philharmonic and the world of acapella. And once again, I'm so excited. Thank you guys for having me. It's so amazing. Um, I love doing like these things too, like talking like from far distances using Skype and stuff like that. It's great. (laughs) (laughs) So fun. That's what we're doing. I love it, love it, love it. Um, but yeah, like a little bit about me. I grew up um, in a Filipino household. I'm Filipino American, and um, yeah. you might know this, but we are all pro- professional karaoke singers. So, <laughs> so that's what we all <laughs> we we pretend like we're professional karaoke singers. But basically, yeah, that's what we do at family parties, and and that's what I just grew up doing. I I grew up um, like singing karaoke, and my parents would like force me to sing at parties, and I actually like secretly loved it. Um, but <laughs> Um, but when I got to high school, I joined um, a vocal jazz group. I was um, in marching band. So that's kind of how I got started um, in the education realm of things. And um, and then I just decided my senior year, I, I wanted to, to do it for the rest of my life. But I wasn't really convinced yet. So I, I went to college. I wanted to pursue um, like... Uh, um, the medical field and like become a, possibly uh-huh. a, a physical therapist because I thought, <gasps> oh. yeah, like music wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't, you know, um, support me. Um, but, mm-hmm. uh, we went on tour. I was actually in the vocal jazz group at California state university of long beach. That's where I went and got my degree. Um, and the teachers there after a performance, um, stood up and, asked me on stage, hey, we're going to offer you a full scholarship if you decide to major in music. So, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, so it was crazy. And I was like, oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so I kind of took that as a sign to kind of major in music. And um, I did that. I, I got my degree in that. And honestly, that changed the rest, the, like the course of my life. Yeah. Like I wouldn't be here right now talking to you guys if I hadn't done that or hadn't majored in music. So, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, kind of yeah. in a nutshell. So so <laughs> most people probably will know you from the Philharmonic, obviously. Yeah. Um how did what was what's the origin story of the group? How did yeah. you guys kind of come together originally? For sure. Um well, uh Avi from Pentatonix, uh he had gotten word from um a show called NBC's The Sing Off that <laughs> they were actually looking for an ethnic group. Um <laughs> to kind of play the role. Uh yeah, um on, on the show and he hit us all up. He hit his friend uh, Jules Cruz first, um, who went to Mount San Antonio College, um, and he asked uh-huh. him. You know, he's uh, Jules is in the is also in my group too, um, and he sings bass. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's Filipino and, and Avi was like, Hey, like just get a bunch of like Filipino guys who could sing, put them together and, <laughs> and just audition for the, for the sing off. Like, can you do that? Mm-hmm. And, uh, Jules was like, yeah, yeah, I could totally do that. So, so Jules went to school with Joe Kaigoy, um, and Nico Del Rey, and they all went to school at Mount San Antonio college and they, um, they started the group kind of, and then they found Trace, uh, Gaynor from, uh, USC and then, Oh, that's a cat. Is that a cat? Sorry, that's yeah. cute. That's our cat in the background. Oh, that's super cute. And, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so they found Trace from USC and they found me from Cal State Long Beach and that the rest was history. We just auditioned for the sing-off and we made it through. What was, what was um, 
your experience like on the show? Because I know um, having heard, you know, other people that have gone through, you know, either the sing off or, you know, other reality singing competitions sometimes to start with, you're in that ethnic group box. Yeah. And then the and then I know sometimes networks can place more and more boxes on you. So what was it kind of like navigating that? I know I watched it when it was airing and stuff and I know like they're playing up some stuff and like honing in on some weaknesses. So what was it like like navigating those things. Yeah, I thought it was actually very beneficial for us, like on the show. You know, it is is a, it is a competition, so mm-hmm. um, a lot of things. You know, a, a lot all of the groups on the show were amazing, and they all could sing, and they're awesome. Um, but what a lot of the show was looking for was just the branding of things, and I think NBC's The Sing Off really helped us create a brand for ourselves, being Filipino American, mm-hmm. and just you know being the Philharmonic. You know, that was a huge advantage for us in the show to actually be called that and to represent Filipino Americans. So in a way it kind of helped us. It did put us in a box, Mm -hmm. um, but we, um, we knew how to kind of play towards that. And, and honestly it was like the most natural thing because we are all Filipino. Like it, it just kind of worked out for the best. Yeah. 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 So after you guys were in the sing off, once you decided to continue with it and go pro with it Mm -hmm. um did you set did you kind of reevaluate what your identity was as a group at that point or did you continue with what you had been going with in the past that's a really good question um we kept going with it actually Uh, again Mm -hmm. like NBC's sing off they they killed it with the branding like we're like yeah you're right like this is (laughs) this is kind of who we are and we we liked the dancing and we kind of liked like the top 40 pop feel like the boy band type thing uh we kind of wanted to get away from the boy band thing because we wanted to Mm -hmm. you know stay true to our our like the musical aspect of things we didn't want to be like too commercial and we we did want to like be musical and, and be and be awesome that way but um it you know we we kept the brand and we kept working with it and we um, you know, after a show like that, you really have to kind of mold it into something of your own, and which is what we did. So. Right. And so, what what has kind of your role been since the beginning, like on the show, and then after the sh- the show? I know that you're MDing now, but yeah. were you doing most of the arrangements back then, and how has that changed, and and what are you up to? Totally, yeah. Um, you know, because we all didn't know each other beforehand. We literally met for the sing off, um, which was awesome. So mm-hmm. yeah, so we didn't know each other's strengths or like we, we just kind of all like went at it and, and we all kind of took the lead wherever needed. Um, and I just took the lead with arrangements because I just, I mean, the our brand was like 90s R&B like and that's what I love to do like <laughs> that's like my thing. Um, mm-hmm. So I would definitely mm-hmm. um, kind of create arrangements to, um, you know, towards that type of genre. So I kind of took the lead on all, a lot of the first arrangements we had. Whenever we had like group arranging sessions, I would definitely like lead the way. And um, and then we'd mm-hmm. have like Joe or like Jules, or everyone in the group is pretty awesome too. And, and they can arrange as well. But um, yeah, I took the lead on that and um, kind of just became the music director officially after the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How how has the being music director been? Um, like what sort of what sort of experience has it been? Oh my gosh, it's been amazing. Like You're so happy. <laughs> so, you can see his face you right can now. See his, smile. Like, his face is lit up. <laughs> yeah. Like honestly guys, it's like guys, it's like the greatest job in the world. Like sometimes I I, like, I have a love hate relationship with it because it is a lot of work and and you know any music director can relate. Um, but like, it's honestly the best feeling when you have a group like the Philharmonic, super talented individuals who are just amazing in every way. And then you get to kind of lead them musically and you can kind of like throw things at them, like whatever you want and they can nail it, you know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. that's such a great that's such a great feeling. And also, like, for example, I'm just going to use the Late Late Show, um, you know, I get to work with like. Uh, amazing celebrities because I am the music director and that's just been a huge Mm -hmm. like blessing in itself to to just be able to do stuff like that so um yeah yeah, and that's not the only thing I just I just I'm so grateful for for this for the position so it's great yeah it's cool yeah I love it so I'm I'm kind of curious as (laughs) to how how you guys transitioned to being professionals post sing off because I know that obviously you, you get on the show and there's hopes that you win and then you guys did very well but ultimately there's not necessarily resources that the network gives you or anything mm. so how did you guys kind of professionally uh, uh, pivot 
to to being professionals in that way? Yeah, that's a good question. I said professionally pivot. <laughs> professionally pivot. I like that. Pivot. I like the word pivot. Um, yes, we did pivot. That was good. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it, honestly, guys, it's it's just about like just first off calling yourself professional, and and we were semi we were called or labeled semi professional on the show. Um, just because we had just started out and we didn't know really who we were as a group and what our sound was, but we kind of just declared like, Hey, we're the Philharmonic, we're a professional group and let's just get it together. So the first mm-hmm. thing we did was just really put a team together. And my sister, who's our manager, you know, we, it started out with her, like getting her to start doing all of our gigs and just kind of organizing everything and just creating a team to back us. And so, um, I think kind of interestingly too, you guys, have obviously you know done a lot of touring and it looks like you did the college circuit a little bit Mm -hmm. um but this past summer you guys i think really embraced you've you've always put out videos since um you guys were put together but i think you guys really leaned into at into that this summer and you know we're doing bunches of collaborations and just putting out tons and tons of content so kind of what was like the motivation behind that for you guys yeah um well we have a social media director his name is trace gainer and he's honestly so awesome at at doing the social media aspect of our group and and it's it's so cool to um to have him on board because he he was kind of the one that kind of spearheaded the whole um like collaboration thing he was just like hey and also my sister too like hey let's just do a bunch of collabs Mm -hmm. and like get people in and you know make awesome acapella arrangements and have them come in and and just kill it so i think that was kind of the beginning of it and um honestly through the collaborations we've gotten a lot of really good feedback and um it's been fun to collab with all the amazing artists yeah since you guys have been posting them so often what is like the like process like for that because i'm sure you have to learn an arrangement and get it to a place that you think is good and great for the video and what's that like trying to turn them out so quickly oh man that's a really good question it's that's that, <laughs> that's difficult it's, it's honestly it can be very hard and it could be very easy too depending yeah um mostly yeah mostly with like all of our collaborators though it's been awesome because they've all been great and everyone that we've chosen to collab with have honestly been like super talented and Mm -hmm. really easy to like musically um get along with so yeah um yeah so the i mean the arrangement process a lot of the arrangements um joe kaigoy did um i did a few here and there but um you know, he'd, he'd spit out an arrangement and then we'd kind of go through and kind of edit mm-hmm. um, and be like, hey, okay, we need like a, a run here. Okay, cool. Um, VJ will will do a run here and then Joe will belt here, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Jules and Nico will do. And, and it'll be quick. We'd like spit out the arrangement and then the day of we'd rehearse it with the collaborator and then we'd record it. Oh, my God. Live. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, it took... That's a lot for one day. It's a lot. It is really a lot. And uh, yeah, it took us a, a few times to get it right. You know, we're not one-take wonders. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, yeah, and I, I'm especially a perfectionist, so I was like, oh, we were so flat there. Yeah. Oh, we went flat. Oh, my gosh, you know? And so we would do it over and over again until it was right, so... Right. Um, I mean, you guys know. You guys know acapella, so... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so... Um, so- Another kind of new element for you guys this year is that um, Barry, your sixth member, Mm. um, left the group. And Mm. so kind of what has that been like and how has that shifted the dynamic and everything in the group? Yeah, for sure. And 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 I love Barry so much. I miss him a lot. And uh, Barry just had to go out and and do his (laughs) own thing. Um, But that happens in a group. You know, you start with Mm -hmm. six people and then along the way you'll you'll. you'll lose one here and there and um honestly it's been it's been okay it's been a good transition to five it was Mm -hmm. hard losing a voice arrangement wise because it was like oh i can't make like cooler chords and stuff and you know you have to leave out the seventh or like leave out the fifth or whatever and omit more like tones Mm -hmm. and stuff i hated it um Mm -hmm. but uh (laughs) but um you know you adjust and um i think uh you know, I I was able to work um, work more arrangements with five, and um, it's definitely an adjustment, and we're getting better at it every day. So, um, now I'm curious because you said you probably had to um, adjust your arrangements for just the the amount of voices that you have now. Mm-hmm. But are you guys 
um, when you're performing live, is that something that you had to, was that a big adjustment for live performances in terms of staging and all of that as well? Oh my gosh, yes, all the time, Kayla. <laughs> 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 yes, okay. like literally when we went from six to five, we were like, oh no, we're like missing um, the third in the chord and we'd have to like <laughs> rearrange the entire song. And th- this was even when Barry was in the group too, like, because um, sometimes, you know, we'd, like a member couldn't like make a show or something. So we'd have to work with just five. And, you know, if you're missing the third or you're missing a, a specific um, note in the chord, it just doesn't sound right, you know. Um, also staging, you know, when you have six people, it's like um, <laughs> finding the middle. An and then, but then, Yeah, exactly. But actually like going to five, you actually have like a direct middle or like an actual middle. Oh, true. So that that mm-hmm. was cool too. I mean, there were advantages to both, but we definitely had to like make a, um, adjustments blocking wise. Mm-hmm. Something else I'm interested in too is I think that you guys are pretty unique in at least the American acapella sphere as to, you know, to, to, that you're representing kind of, you know, a certain heritage, a certain country. And, um, I just, I just wondering like how that, how that kind of affects how you guys make decisions and how you, you know, think about where you're going to tour and, and, and how you're going to. And I, like you guys have done songs in Tagalog and like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just such an interesting thing to me and you're kind of representing a culture, but also doing this super niche music thing at the same time. Yeah. So like, how is that and bouncing that? Uh, it's so cool. Actually, we honestly didn't know that it was going to happen where we were literally representing like Filipino Americans mm-hmm. um, because we, we were all just acapella nerds and we all just wanted to sing and like do that. But yeah. in itself, like the, the brand kind of brought this like, oh, like, shoot, we're actually like representing Filipino Americans. And it's like this has never been done before. Yeah. Like we on, we're on us, you know, like especially in America, like we've never been represented as Asian Americans or just, you know, Asian Americans in general, not just Filipino Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's honestly like a new frontier. We we've we don't know what's going to happen next in terms of like, you know, how does our music sound and like mm-hmm. what 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 does an Asian American have to offer to the music industry? And there's all these questions. Um, but it's kind of cool to be the ones to kind of like lead the way. Mm hmm. In doing that, we we honestly, we don't know where we're going with it, but like we can, you know, trying different things and like experimenting like that's, it's a huge part of just um, being a part of that Philharmonic brand. So I I don't know. It's just like, it's cool. It's so cool to just uh, realize that you do represent something bigger Mm -hmm. and that uh, honestly, it's just like anything's, anything can happen kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's funny when you were talking about the fact that you're, like you came from a family of karaoke singers <laughs> yeah. kind of like I I grew up in the Bay Area and I had like a ton of Filipino friends nice. and like it was always like the Filipinos that were like the best at singing <laughs> but you just like you don't really directly see that representation in you know yeah. the 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 industry the music industry or the entertainment industry but they're like but you guys are some of like the most talented people like you're Evan, the best singers. You so, are like, the nicest person in profession. the world. I love you so much. <laughs> like please keep like complimenting my culture because I love it so much. What are you what's your what's your background? Like what's your um I this I feel like you're like Asian kind of I'm half Vietnamese. Oh woo Vietnamese. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you're <laughs> sorry, I'm just go, go Filipinos. <laughs> um yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, and honestly, it, we are a singing nation. We do love to sing. Yeah. yeah. And it's just been kind of in the blood for a very, very long time. And, and um, yeah, we are a bunch of like just karaoke like singers. We go in at our <laughs> Filipino parties. So everyone can attest to that. Yeah. But thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm sure that you guys have done a lot of traveling with touring and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So could you kind of speak to that a little bit in terms of what touring is like and what um, that fast paced sort of lifestyle is like? Yeah, we did the sing off tour after the sing off itself or after season four. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also did the college tour, like you said, Evan. Um, um, which was um, off of Deggy, and we just toured a bunch of colleges last year. Uh-huh. Um, and both were very, very interesting. Um, the sing-off tour was actually, it, it was more corporate, so we were very taken care of, uh, well taken mm-hmm. care of, and we had mm-hmm. such a great time. But but like doing our own college tour last year was definitely a challenge. And 
mm-hmm. just you know um and just experience with that it, it's it's so it's hard to do it on your own but it's definitely possible and i would recommend it to any musician out there especially with technology these days like go out there and get your name out there it will be hard but do it it's so much mm-hmm. fun what what are some of the challenges that you that you were faced doing the college tour um we traveled all over the u.s so it was like varying time zones like we'd be in philly one day and then we'd fly back to la and mm-hmm. then we'd go to like the midwest and then be on the east coast literally the next day mm-hmm. so it'd be like every single day like think of it like a a seven day week you know um two days you're in a certain time zone and then you'll switch and you guys could only imagine what that does to your health and to your voice and yeah. you know it's like it's difficult and And also acapella in general, it's like when you're like touring, things can get sloppy, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) and, and, and sometimes, and sometimes you just don't want to deal with it because, you know, you're just doing it over and over again. So it's just important to like keep at it and, and also change up your set here and there and just keep things fresh and new, but also just realize like you're a human being and you have to sing. So like take care of yourself. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. Totally. And also something that's happening in the past few years, you'd mentioned it already, but um, the riff off segments on the Late Late Show with mm. James Corden, mm-hmm. you guys have been doing the um, the backup for that. I was just wondering how that like came about. Yeah, um, well, my sister, our, our manager, got a call um, from the um, from the network from CBS um, after our appearance in Pitch Perfect Two. Mm-hmm. Um, we just had an opportunity, yeah, to do the riff off segment with Anna Kendrick, and she was our first first riff off on the show. Yeah. Um, so basically, it was because of us being on Pitch Perfect Two because of that exposure. You know, that opened so many doors. It opened so many doors, yeah. and I'm so grateful mm-hmm. because, like, this is, like, one of the coolest doors ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> the light behind you started shining. Oh, my God. <laughs> <gasps> Perfect. We have to it's screenshot that. I know. It's just like a halo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Love that. Okay. Um, but, yeah, like, it's it's honestly, like, that's such a cool gig. And um, we're, like, literally James Corden's, like, go-to acapella group now. Um, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. It's incredible. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. What has it so. been like working with, you know, those like you've worked with like Jamie Foxx and people like that. And it's like, how is it like teaching them to like sing acapella kind of? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely interesting. You have artists coming in and, and actors and actresses coming in and they're like, OK, what are we doing? Cool. Yeah. Um, and they don't <laughs> and they don't realize, like, yeah, it is acapella and you do have to be pitch accurate and you do have to sing in time, yeah. you know. And so some some artists come in and they completely kill it and slay it. And it's mm-hmm. great. And then some artists come in and they're like, oh, shoot, like, oh, my gosh, I have to adjust. And like, I actually have to, like, yeah. sound good. You know what I mean? <laughs> because yeah. it's like you're exposed. You're definitely yeah. exposed. Yeah. So um, really, it's definitely. Really. Yeah, it's definitely an adjustment for them and honestly whenever i'm in the room with with these people when i get to work with them i literally cannot believe it so half the time i'm freaking out and then the <laughs> other half i'm thinking like okay i gotta stay focused and actually have to tell them how this arrangement goes because if i don't they'll mess up or something so yeah yeah it's crazy it's um it's an amazing opportunity but yeah it's so funny well, like what because mo- a lot of the the segments if you haven't seen them are a lot of James Corden like doing banter with yeah. the person he's like riff offing with and it's funny to just like like and a lot of it is just you guys standing there mm-hmm. and watching them mm-hmm. so you can like <laughs> kind of see that in your faces a little bit yeah. but you just have to like kind of act cool and like nod totally. when he makes a joke it's just it's, it's super fun <laughs> absolutely yeah you have to like stay engaged but like don't go on autopilot at the same time it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's hard but yeah it's fun <laughs> yeah um so we've talked about Philharmonic a lot in obviously for a great reason but (laughs) on the flip side of that you do a lot of other things you're doing solo work and you also are director at acapella academy which we love um and you've directed a bunch of groups you did elevate and ignite um can you just kind of talk about just acapella academy in general and what that experience has been like for you as a director yeah, and uh, yeah, Acapella Academy is seriously another blessing, another amazing door that has been opened because of the sing-off and because I knew Ben Bram mm-hmm. and, and Rob Dietz and, and Avi. And honestly, the organization itself is truly an amazing, like life-changing thing to be a part of. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just like, it's so cool to be able to 
to direct um, just a bunch of talented kids every summer. There's something about that where like, it's like you, you realize like, wow, like you guys are so talented. Like how you guys are so young and so amazing, <laughs> you know, but, um, but, but there's so much more to that because you do working with them and seeing how they're developing and, and, um, just seeing their talent and cultivating that talent is just like, mm-hmm. it's an award. It's a reward in itself. So, yeah. um, yeah, so it's just, it's been amazing and I've, I've done it for the past four years and every group has been amazing and i'm super grateful for it yeah, yeah. i was like what it, when you're um directing a group or, or teaching classes what are you what are you trying to get across to the kids and like what values are you looking to instill in them and yeah what are you trying to yeah. bring to the table for them yeah a lot of it is because because they're so talented already and they already have the singing down you really just do have to talk about and really emphasize the um, power of like professionalism and just being on top of your game all the time and and how what it's mm-hmm. like to actually perform and literally give music to people in performance. So it's like you can yeah. be the most you know what I mean. It's like you could be the most talented person, but you could be completely shut off and and not give anything to your audience. But I think that's what I, yeah, what I try to bring to my kids is like, hey, like you're, when when you're performing, you're literally like giving your soul to these people and you have to give them something when you perform. Um, Yeah. So that, and and just being professional and being like a a, um, a well-rounded musician who takes notes, you know, um, on their sheet music, who, um, you know, walks the walk and, and, uh, just kind of just and being an amazing musician in general is how what I try to bring across so yeah yeah Yeah. and seeing as you've you've obviously had to do a bunch of arrangements too for this as well so Mm -hmm. how does that sort of differ I'm sure it differs a lot but how does that sort of differ from music that you're arranging for Philharmonic and then music you're arranging for younger musicians and a bigger group of musicians at this at that point too yeah it's always a switch because i write you know i arrange for five guys you know so the ranges differ um you know um Mm -hmm. uh, now and then when i arrange for acapella academy i have female voices so i have to kind of adjust to that Mm -hmm. also it could be like a group of 12 a group of 16 so i also have to adjust for that too so balance and and there's just a lot of things to consider when you do that um and it's way different like small groups versus large groups there's a whole Mm -hmm. dynamic that you can explore um but there's also Mm -hmm. things you have to watch out for as well Mm. yeah yeah and so i guess academy is all about kind of connecting with the youth but between between them and all the fans that philharmonic have kind of gained over the years like what is if you were to give a piece of advice to uh maybe a young musician who's trying to make it trying to get to somewhere close to where you are Mm. like what would what would you what would you tell them i would say do what makes you happy i think that's the biggest thing i think a lot of people especially with social media Mm. we we love to compare ourselves to other people and we love to um just try to make other people happy Mm -hmm. um when it kind of um you know, it gets in the way of what you want in the end. So I think it's important for any young musician starting out that it's not about trying to attain fame or like trying to be successful. Like that really shouldn't Mm -hmm. be your ultimate goal. It really should be about just what makes you happy and what makes you wake up every day and just love your life, you know? And, and so with that being in mind, um, kind of going forward is like, you know, just, just wake up every day and understand your passion, go for it, no matter what it is, do you and do it well. It's a good one. I love that. I'm yeah. going to say that as my motto. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. Um, I love you. So, I love you, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> um, so unfortunately yeah. we're nearing the end of our episode okay. today. We could ask Aww. you a hundred more questions, but we don't want to take guys. too much of your time. Um, but so there's two questions we like to ask all of our guests. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> um, and the first one is, um, what sort of trends do you see in acapella that you're excited by, that you're really mm. looking forward to see move acapella forward? Um, well, obviously PTX, the trendsetters of acapella, um, they're continuing to move forward, and I 
appreciate them so much because they've honestly Mm -hmm. changed the game in terms of acapella. And um, Mm -hmm. what I see trending is that acapella is only going to expand um, even more. But it 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 I feel like it's leaving the kind of pure acapella way of things have how it used to be and it's kind of expanding to like fusing acapella with other types of genres but also different Uh types of sounds too i think that's really the new frontier of it i don't know what do you guys think right yeah no yeah yeah i totally agree agree (laughs) okay (laughs) yeah yeah cool and i think that's what the philharmonic what we're i think that's what we're gonna try to do is try to not just experiment with acapella but other sounds as well and to bring it into our music Mm -hmm. so We'll see. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And then, Do you wanna... and then, um, this the last question is: What's next for you? What's on your plate? Yeah. Any projects? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, well, I think that um, honestly, the Philharmonic is ongoing. We're heading to Rhode Island and Alabama really soon, so we're still doing like random states like that we have something called the vocal random Random states like that um we do something called the vocal lab which is actually through the philharmonic if you guys want to know about this but it's like a it's basically like a workshop and we go to um schools and we go to groups and we actually like coach them um so yeah so that's a thing that we're kind of starting yeah um and then with myself i'm continuing to write um write original music um and i think i'm writing for the philharmonic i'm also writing for my own solo stuff um but definitely check out um what we're about to like release in the future because a lot of it's going to be original music which is cool. sweet there yeah 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 i mean i was super into dance with me so <gasps> really what thank, comes next yeah thank yeah, you yeah, man yeah, i sure. appreciate it yeah i yeah. that's like my baby that's my baby. So <laughs> sweet, yeah. I'm really excited for that. Um, I think cool. I do have to say just before you go, mm-hmm. we have a friend named Dante. He did the sketches for the show originally. Oh and yeah, he, you are literally him. And I just felt that <gasps> we had to say that and put it. In Shout there. out to Dante. Hi, hi, Dante. I love you. I can't believe like I'm meeting my long lost twin. Um, but you really yeah, are. you truly are. <laughs> really? Oh Same my gosh. Same personality. Have... Yeah. Really? I have to meet him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We we texted about Philharmonic when you guys were on the sing off. So really? this will be great. He'll love oh my it. gosh, yeah. awesome. He's in LA. Go find him. Okay, yeah, I will yeah. find him. Yeah, you um, guys have to like connect us, but I also want to hang out with you guys too. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're down. Um, yeah. Where wait, where are you guys? We're in Boston. Oh you're yeah, in Boston. That's right. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, VJ, for joining us this week, and we hope you'll join us next week for a new episode of Head Voice. Hey, you guys.